I think this is the 17th annual World Trails Conference. It started in 1997. You guys do the math. Essentially, it's a gathering. I know there's a lot of people here who have never built a treehouse who are trying to learn about it, but it's also a gathering of professionals who've been doing this. And we're all very willing to share what we know as articulately as we can <laughs> in a very short period of time. Of course, our host is Michael Garnier, who is known for the Garnier Limb. Uh, what's the purpose of this conference? The purpose of this conference is to exchange ideas and share ideas for you know, building a better treehouse. Well, this is a backup that's used a lot for GLs. It's a lot of times, it's mostly used for if when you, when you put your, have to put your load out further away from the tree. All right, um, but we're doing it here as if the load was still at two inches to give it so that we can see what this adds, what this lag bolt adds, okay? I have not tested a GL with a suspender yet. All right, so on this, we at two inches out, uh, it held, uh, it held, the, it went up to 3,800 uh, foot-pounds on, on this gauge here. Sure. Okay, we're at 3,000. All right, now we're getting up there. If that failed, that would be You might want to move this way. Yeah. You guys might want to move over there. Okay, now we're going, now we're up to, uh, up to close to five. Wow. Yeah, 55? 5,000. Okay, we're going to six. We're at 66. Wow. Oh, is that piece over there moving at all? The lag. Is the lag moving at all? I've been watching. Oh, it seems so. Bing, bing, bing. Be bending the base out. Yeah, you're compressing the wood at the bottom. You know, Mike, it looks like your jack is twisting. Yeah. It looks like it's twisting your head that of the jack. jack. Yeah, it looks like it, it, looks like it wants yeah, to break the jack. 7,000? It might be. It's breaking my pipe. I see some motion yeah. in that. Okay. All right, that's all I'm going to go. I'm satisfied with that. That's real, that's real impressive. It's ruined my uh, tester. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 <laughs> okay, so... I'm just going to explain this test here first of uh, the sort of the dynamics of the loading that went on with this. So we had the GL in the wood. Now normally you put a load on it and it does a, it wants to compress this part of the wood and compress this part and this part here. This is a good example of looking to see what the dynamics of the wood are. It shows where the wood actually compresses. Now, with this load here that we did, we put a loop on the end, and we supported it back here with a one inch lag. We basically were trying to take this whole thing, instead of a lever arm, we were making this a column supported on both ends and trying to push it this way. And by that, we were able to, we doubled the amount that it would hold, and uh, my gear was starting to bend on me, break on me, so we had to stop. So the testing gear. The testing gear. So I'm quite impressed with the hanging just from a one-inch lag. Michael, uh, so you double, you say you're able to double what the tab is rated for itself alone? Right. And basically, it's not a lever arm. One of the reasons for why we did this is because if, if you put your weight out here without it, we know that it'll fail sooner. It won't hold as much weight because you've got more of leverage. Uh, this was to take away that leverage and it took it away very well. We started this conference to, to build a better tree house. This tree house here, we had already gotten a permit for it. I was able to show the county that it would handle the loads required to by code. So by code, you're, you have a live load, which is, if it's a residential, it's 40 pounds per square foot. If it's commercial, it can be 100 pounds per square foot. 
You have your snow load, which is something that comes in the winter. You have your dead load, which is your structure. And that's usually only about 20 pounds per square foot. Your big loads are your live loads, your snow loads, and then your wind loads. Your wind loads can really kill you if, the, if, your, if your building department wants you to uh, uh, build for that. Then you got seismic too. Now California, we inquired about permits before. The seismic, I, I, I'm not too worried about with trees. Yeah, be, well, yeah, it's because it's your horizontal loading. It's, be, you know, it's a back and forth thing. So that's what a sliding bracket is for, anyway, is for, for some of that. And um, the only place we've really had failures has been where we've had cyclical horizontal loading due to wind. And so it's one of the things that higher up you go, the more leverage you're going to have, the more movement you're going to have. And uh, uh, there's just, that's one of the restrictions to tree houses. And one of the rules of thumb on it are the higher up you go, the smaller you make it. Tell a little failure story. Okay. So in uh, one of the treehouse workshop jobs a few years ago, uh, in essence, we had this kind of setup in a Douglas fir tree in Redmond, Washington. And this tree was at about 30 feet of height where the connection was. The uplift arrestor was mounted to a 7 by 15 structural beam oriented horizontally from one tree to another tree. And it was being held up essentially by a tab system, a GL system just like this. Um, the tree moved so much that we had a lot of this going on again and again. And so finally the GL failed right here where it transitions from thread to solid stock. It broke. Now, and when it broke, it was also suspended by a dynamic by a by a cable just like you were testing over here a moment ago. And it happened that it was a three-eighths cable about ten feet long that was attached to another GL rather than a one-inch lag bolt. And when this failed, because the 7 by 15 timber was so deep in 15 inches, the timber tried to roll over. Because this, this failed here, and this was trying to pull out. The, the boss prevented this from coming through the uplift arrestor, and the suspender held. And the beam, because it was so big, just leaned up against the tree. So it did not actually roll over. That second corner of the house, which is a fairly heavy house, dropped about an inch and a half, two inches. Now this was not discovered for 18 months. Oh, when we just happened to go inspect things and something just looked really weird about that GL from the ground. and went up to look at it. In fact, it had sheared and I mentioned it to the treehouse owner. I said, you know those French doors, they haven't been able to close for 18 months. I don't know. Well, why didn't you call us? I don't know, I just figured it was something else. So that suspender held the whole damn system for a year and a half and then we repaired it. The Peacock, uh, the Swiss family, the Swede out there and part of the cavalry were done by, well, well I took metal and attached it to the tree with lag bolts. And we tested those and they were fairly strong in, in that and they work off of friction off the side of the tree. Then the tree actually grows around it in bolster blocks, so it's like putting a little, you know, like insetting it, or, you know, so um, in a bolster block. So they're, they're strong enough, but some of the limitations on that is, for one, it becomes more intrusive to the tree over time. And then the other is to be able to allow for different brackets and movement and stuff. A lot of these tree houses that people make, you know, I get calls for, is, you know, you take a beam, instead of nailing it to it, they lag bolt it to the tree. And it holds the weight until the tree moves and actually shears that bolt. So what we're trying to do with the GL is be able to support bigger loads, point loads, because a tree house is different than a regular house. A regular house has a foundation that's usually continuous, and your load is spread out over this whole area, perimeter area. But with a tree house, you have one tree or two trees, or if you have four trees, you're usually supporting it from four points as your load. So you have to design it. It's sort of like timber framing in that sense, right? 
point load. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then, you know, if you have a single tree, you've got, now here on this one here, we have four points on this that we're, that we're supporting the load for this tree house. We're using knee braces, but it's four loads. And then you have two trees, you're going to have, you have two trees, two columns, but you could have three points or four points on each tree. You look at it as if it's going to be a column. If you were building a regular structure that was a vertical cantilever structure, that's your tree though. Your tree is engineered that way. It's a vertical cantilever structure in itself. Okay? And you have one tree, you just have one point and you have then it's, then it's kind of more critical, the higher up you go, you get a bigger lever arm. So you get a bigger sail area, all right? And uh, so you higher up you go, the smaller you want to go, all right? Your worry with, this, with a multiple tree tree house, you have four different points that helps you from tipping over, but then you get your, you, all this different movement and everything like that that you have to take it, you know, into account for. But that's one of the things I've been doing here for 25 years is watching what's been going on with these trees. This one here I built uh, to last 20 years. It's lasted 25. And uh, so now I want to build them to last 50. How, much, how many more years do you expect to get out of it? That one? I'll get another 20 years out of it. One of the things, though, that you, you want that I'm doing now more is I'm planning, when I plan my tree houses, I look in... You know, I say, oh, well, this is going to last 15 years. I don't have to worry about it, but 15 years comes pretty quick. So you, uh, so, you know, you, your replacement before it right, how to do it, you know, how you build it will make it easier for you to, to because these are like porches. Tree houses are like porches, and porches, they, uh, you know, they just, they, they go after a while. The beams come up. Tree houses are like deck systems that are elevated up in the air and they're well ventilated and if you keep an eye on on your trouble spots which you'll discover in the first couple of years of a new tree house being built where where leaves tend to gather and moisture can can collect and you are able to maintain those spots and keep them clean you will extend the life of your tree house <laughs>